Hi, we welcome you to the Companion Chapel. I'm Tammy, this is Michael, and we are Bible teachers. We examine the Bible by covering each book chapter by chapter and verse by verse for you to absorb the precious subject matter being conveyed. Thank you, Tammy. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the one great subject of the Word of God. The whole Bible is about him directly or indirectly, and everything centers in and around him. Jesus Christ is the master key to your inner peace, your salvation of God. Jesus Christ is your personal key to all answers and explanations as we travel through this world on our way home to God, our Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ will show you the way. Do you feel there's more to the Bible and to God's Word than you're being taught? We invite you to discover God's Word with us. And with that, Tom, we'll say a prayer, Timmy. And we repent in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ's perfect, precious name. And we pray for wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, and strength. And let's get right into it here. So we were at Revelation chapter 12. And we know from chapter 12, this is a chapter that's like inserted. And it's giving us the lowdown. It's giving us the rundown. There was a great sign in heaven. There was The sign was a woman clothed. We looked up and... The, and you know, it was between the moon and the stars and the sun was on her. The sun's light shining off us. There's a message. It's a sign. And she was crying, travailing like a woman giving birth. There's a new age coming. We have the old age, the ice age. And now we have a new age coming. And there's another sign. What's this sign? Oh, Satan's hanging around up there with his power system that he had in the first age when we weren't in the flesh. We were in different different kind of body but we were there because in the book of jeremiah it states i knew you before you were born in the book of ezekiel it states god's word i own all souls god owns all souls it's your spirit that's your personality your spirit is the intellect of your soul and it also states in job i think we could just document all day long here in job we all were together singing um together before all this happened, before the overthrow, you're going to see the word foundation in the book of Revelation. And the word foundation means there was an overthrow. Something happened, and science tells us there was a big deal that happened a few thousand years ago, about 10,000 years. It ended, and it was the Ice Age ended. There was an overthrow. And then we found in verse 4 that Satan drew a third part of the people with him. And this is why God had to put us in the flesh. Because if you know, your Father created us for His pleasure, as it's written in the book of Revelation here. And does a parent want to, you know, does a parent want to get rid of his children? Does he want to kill his children? No, He's giving us a time period here. We go through the flesh and He's going to see He wants your free will love. And that is why we're doing in the flesh today. Because what Satan did in the first age, when we're in our spiritual bodies. Now we're in a flesh age, and the book of Revelation teaches us what comes after the flesh age. Where are we going? Where is everybody that passed on? Anyway, with that, let's go. Where were you, Tammy? Verse 6 or verse 5? 6. I think you're on verse 6. And uh, Revelation 12, 6, Tammy, go ahead. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. So, in verse 5, uh... The woman, or this new age, also brought forth the man-child, who is to rule all nations with the rod of iron. Does that sound like, you know, a little, uh, hey, come here, just love Jesus? No, there's rules. We like discipline. We like things done properly. And we don't like a wishy-washy. We like the security and stability of it done properly, God's word. And let's see, verse 5 would also indicate to us there's an interval of years during which um, Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. And we're living in that interval of years right now. It's called the grace period. It's your unmerited favor period. And in then verse 16 we just read, the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God. So how does God prepare us? God allows us to understand his word, his salvation. And what is this place in the wilderness? This place simply means, and when we look it up, it just means an isolated area from Satan's rat race. And what's, how can we get isolated from that when it's all around us? 
Well, we start many member bodies. We have Jesus Christ saturated into us, the Holy Spirit, the veil of Christ, edge of God, and we get this inner peace. So we have, and then like me and Tammy, we try and start a many member body pocket. And then we have a pocket of people. That is what God is allowing us. The wilderness just means an isolated area. If me and Tammy and, and, and you guys who study the word and feel it, and want it and share it and keep it and we're all together that is a pocket that is what the wilderness is being referred to here and there's also a time period attached to it and you'll notice it's in days and all prophecy to do with jesus christ our savior and us it's in days if you want to follow satan it's in nights if you want to follow the false christ or the instead of christ your prophecy is going to be in nights. Night is lunar, days is solar, and we are children of the light. Go ahead, Tammy, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels... Dragon and his angels picked a big fight here, and we know who Satan is, and we've learned a lot about his angels, and we're going to document a few places here, possibly, um fought against they were warring with michael and his angels that's our guy the archangel michael um fought against satan and his angels all his false prophets his seven thousand angels that were the nephilim and raphium when you see those two words written it's in the book of genesis and you you follow that thread and then you find out oh those are the angels that were that were kept under the river Euphrates and they're loosed at the end. And as Christ teaches us, the end times will be just like Noah. When Noah was around, who was around? These fallen angels, as described in the book of Jude, the same angels, they left their first estate. They came down here with way more brain power, knowledge power, and they took advantage of us back then. And they targeted the daughters of Adam. They were attacking the seed line. As it's written a few verses ago, Satan is sitting there waiting to devour that seed line. He wants to crush it. Satan was instrumental. It was Satan's plan to put Christ on the cross. And as it's written in Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between your seed, Satan, and Eve's seed where the man-child comes through. Jesus Christ comes through. Go ahead. This really, really comes together very easily for us. Go ahead, Tammy. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Boot. You got the boot, Satan. You and your crew also, who else is with Satan? And this is, this is where Satan's big trump card comes in. As it's written in the book of Daniel, he comes in peacefully and prosperously. They put on a big show, as it's written here in Revelation, with their sparkly vests, and they have a lot of power. They have the power behind them of the beast system, the four hidden dynasties of religion. They're just going to squeeze all the religions together. We're seeing it now. They're going to squeeze them together and call it chrislam. They're going to squeeze together the economy, the North American economy, the African Union economy, the Asian Union economy, and the European Union economy, and make it one world system. There's two systems coming together, religion in a one world system, economics in one world system, political leaders coming together in one world system, and the education system, which is already in overdrive. And that's your, wherever you get your news or information or stories, rumors, the internet, the newspapers, wherever, the education system, and of course the base education system, where we send our children, they've already kicked God out a long time ago. Lord's Prayer, no way. Well, you just booted God out, you got, you got something to answer for there. Let's go, we're in chapter 12, Revelation, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Uh, carpal tunnel. Right, Tim? The great dragon was cast out. Now, look, look at all Satan's names. The people are going, well, we got pictures of a dragon here, and we got... This is the problem when people 
uh, ministers, and I didn't get to it. I can't believe it. Second Thessalonians chapter 11, verses 12 to 15. This is Satan's big trump card. He has ministers, plain ministers of righteousness. Do not be surprised. They're disguised as ministers of righteousness on pulpits on every corner, street corner, pulpits. He's saturated the Christian ministry, the alleged Christian ministry with these pastors, ministers, whatever you call them. They're you have to be honest with yourself. Are you being taught God's word? Or are you just going to church, putting some money in a thing, singing a few songs, and sitting there and having a sermon insist upon you to only learn a couple words of the Bible? I can tell you, and we never get personal here hardly ever. I went to church for 10 years and came out biblically illiterate. I knew there was more to God's word than was being taught. But what we have here, we have... Satan in different roles. So we have Satan in different roles sitting behind pulpits as he has influence on these people. They're his ministers of righteousness. And he plays roles as the old serpent. Well, where was he called the serpent? In the garden. It wasn't a snake hissing. It was a bright, shining one. It was Satan, Nikash. As it's written in a, um, Ezekiel chapter 28, he was made in the full pattern, gorgeous, full of wisdom and beauty. That's who the serpent is. He's the same guy as the devil. He's the same guy as Satan. He's the same guy that deceiveth the whole world in Jesus Christ's first warning in Mark 13, Matthew 24, that great sermon from the mount. Jesus Christ says, Do not let anyone deceive you. And here it is, the guy that deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels cast out with him. This happens de facto when he sits as antichrist the instead of christ at the sixth file six seal six trump so here just in this chapter 12 we've covered the age before us when dinosaurs were ripping around in the flesh but we weren't in the flesh now we've covered jesus christ coming jesus christ on the cross jesus christ sitting at the right hand side of god it's covering the many membered body you make your pocket and you make it grow and strong it's t and it's telling us what's going to happen in the future michael's giving the old satan devil antichrist serpent the boot cast him out first 10 revelation 12 10 tammy and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. What a blabbermouth. Who doesn't know someone that just can't? Shh, we don't want to hear it, man. He just carries on and carries on. He's before God day and night. He knows who's in heaven. He knows who's on earth. Documenting the book of Job. When um, when Job and uh, God are talking. Hey, what about this guy Job here? Let's see what he's made out of. And if you want to hear what the preachers are teaching today. Let's just use an example. Me and Tammy watched a preacher the other day. We watched for half an hour. And after Tammy was done fixing her scarf. We decided to talk about that he had taught one verse he started in on one verse and it sounded great man this guy was flash now i'm talking carpet auditorium full nice padded seats the colors everything was it was rocking man this guy was he was slamming down the beats he had big pails beside every set of pews you know they're getting filled with money right to the top he started in on one verse 15 minutes later, he went to another verse in a totally different book, tried to sell us five different things, and it looks good. It sounds good. We wander after this Satan type, this Antichrist type, like, wow, this is something. This looks good. Look at all the people. They're taking notes. They're taking notes on his words, his little sayings about the Bible. Man can't write a better salvation story, not story, salvation what? Not story. Man can't write a better salvation uh, outline. I'm distracting scarf. You keep banging into me. Man can't, Move over. man can't write a better way to salvation than what Jesus Christ has given us to us. But man always tries. He always tries to take a verse here, a few verses there, and then talk about it. And then we're never taught. And then they actually try and sell us a book about it. And this is what's happening. The whole world... 
watches this. And now we hear a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. What does salvation mean? Yeshua, salvation of God. Jesus Christ, our Savior, finally. And strength. This word strength is, um, I ah, forget the word. Powerful, authoritative. That's what we want. We don't want a wishy-washy, you know, maybe I want some. You know what? Let's just take it this way, brother. Let's take it that way, brother. You know, now the kingdom of our God, the king and his dominion. That's what we're waiting for. The power of his Christ, his anointed one, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. Back in verse 5, Jesus Christ has a new role to play now. He knew Satan back then. They were buddies. And then Satan decided to act like that. Now God used Jesus Christ, his son, his only begotten son, to give us the salvation. He comes born innocent of woman. He comes as Jesus Christ walking as a lamb. Then he comes back to rule as a rod of iron. And for the deeper student, don't forget Melchizedek. Okay, Tim. Oh, the accuser. Of our brethren the accuser what is the word accuser it's the same it's the same guy it's the same it's the old serpent the devil Satan the word accuser means Satan he accuseth he goes <sighs> intense opposition to everything uh, it's like a critic these critics that come along criticize the Bible you know what critic means critic means to judge and all God's ways are judgment. Vengeance is mine, Deuteronomy chapter 32. God is the judge. We're supposed to spot, and you know what? This is just insane. You're not going to believe this. It's going to teach us that in the next few verses. Go ahead, Tammy. Go to um, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. How do we overcome this Satan, the accuser who sits there and is accusing us in front of God all, all day and all night? And more on that is, remember, there's a, a period of silence between the six and seven. Why? People, oh, Satan's not up there with his angels. Just just power talking, just jabber on it. You know, oh, finally, we get some peace and quiet. And we all know what people are like, like that. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and that is how we get salvation. By the blood of the Lamb, he gave us that covenant. He gave us grace, unmerited favor. When he died on the cross for us, because he loves you. When Christ was going, is there, is there any other way to do this, Father? He wasn't trying to bail. He didn't want us to have to go through Satan's tribulation and then having to judge us that's just showing us Christ is so saturated with love that we can't even comprehend it how do we overcome by the word of the testimony that they love not their lives unto death we don't we don't love our life unto death okay let's just how can we teach this through the Bible not through me and Jamie's words it's when Christ says about your brothers and sisters that you have to love him more it just means you have to love those people but love them a little bit less don't let anybody drag you including as it's written a man's faults shall be of their own household matthew 10 uh, 36 just be careful what we're saying here is you know you don't love the ways of the world and the rat race and trying to get ahead and scrambling and 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 um you know constantly having anxieties which is an insult to God worrying which is an insult to God having fear is an insult to God what do you have to worry about and let's just use God's word here in Isaiah what's God say about fear he says fear not I am with you word of God to you as an individual go ahead Tammy let's just uh, try and get some verses down here verse 12 therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Um, so rejoice, you be happy. Therefore rejoice. Who's going to rejoice? 
Not the people who are asking for mountains and rocks to fall and that are seeking death. When you're seeking death, you're looking for your pastor, your preacher. Who is your spiritual leader? Because that 666, when it's getting towards the end, you're going to find out, wait, something's really wrong here. Uh-oh, where is this guy? None of this stuff, all my self-help books don't mean a damn thing anymore. All these books, where's my preacher? Oh my God, judgment starts at the pulpit. And he's responsible for teaching you the word. So you have to go ask your preacher, minister, or whatever you want to call him. Why am I biblically illiterate? And if you're not, that's the greatest thing. Give us a call. I'd love to have a two-way conversation about the Bible. Wherefore rejoice ye in heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of earth. This word earth means a distinct region in earth and of the sea of people. Woe to this distinct region in earth and to the sea of people that are there. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. When we're in our little many-membered body pockets, it can get huge. Like this many-membered body pocket that me and Tammy are trying to start here by the grace of God, the, the companion chapel. When we're all together, we're impenetrable with the, with the gospel armor. We have a place to go. We have people around us. We'll do just fine. Woe unto them that are, that, you know, are relying on the ways of the world, that think the whole economy is going to hold up for them or the ways of the world or whatever you're relying on, anything except the word of God. Um, go ahead, Tammy. Let's let this teach itself. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Okay, let's just, um, let's just say here, how does Satan know that he has but a short time? Because Satan's full of wisdom. He knows the Bible inside out. He knows the Bible in even, even better than Daniel, the prophet. And Daniel was regarded as one of the most educated, smartest people in the Bible. Satan knows. He uses Scripture to fool us, as it's written. He used Scripture to fool Eve into doing terrible things in the, in the garden. As it was just written, Satan, you were in the garden. You nasty. And then it was written... Let's just uh, go to Jesus Christ. He used scripture to try and even Jesus Christ, our anointed one, Yeshua Messiah, Satan himself used scripture on Jesus to try and make him stumble. And so what do you think Satan's going to use on us, on all us people down here on the planet Earth, in the flesh body? He's going to use scripture on us. And he's going to twist it a little bit. And Jesus Christ knows that this is going to be so powerful. He had to shorten it from a three and a half year period down to a five month period. Because it would be too much even for these little pockets of the many membered body. Even for God's elect. That just means set aside. That just means set aside ones. We've set aside our heart for God. You Satan in all your ways and your, your four hidden dynasties. We see it. We watch it. We're amazed by it. This is insane. Look at the way the world is. Like I can hop on a plane and go around the world. We can be around the world in seconds on the internet. We can phone someone across the street around the world. This is just amazement. Every few months there's more amazement as, as the system comes. But in every place where Satan is, God promises a remnant of truth will be there. And it's up to us. It's up to you as an individual to find it. And, um... So Tammy just read 13, the dragon, Satan, saw he was cast to the earth. And what does he do? He persecutes the woman brought, which brought forth the man child. That's us. We're bringing forth Jesus Christ, his living word through this age, his saving word, the key to your inner peace, the keys of David to unlock the scriptures. It's not a mystery to us because mystery just means secret among friends. That's who he's persecuting. He's coming after anyone with the truth and people that represent the truth and people that have that podium, also known as pulpit. Satan uses the Bible. That's his big tool to um, trickery, slanderous. Just like, you know, Jesus, if he was here right now, this was written a long time ago. You know what? He would probably say this or that. It sounds good. Look at the flash. This guy's what a show. Instead of Christ, do not be deceived. The word of God. Go ahead, Tammy. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, 
where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. These verses just make us feel so safe. The women were given two wings of an eagle. What are we talking about here? Our victory song, Deuteronomy chapter 32. It's the song we sing, and we'll document that in a few chapters ahead. A great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place. This is right from our victory song. It's a special place. It's a set-aside place that we've just been reading about. It's our gospel armor. Once we have the veil of Christ and hedge of God, saturated by the Holy Spirit as it's written, we are in us. We are in a special place. So let's just analyze this verse a little bit more. She is nourished for a time and times and a half time. That's the three and a half years. And it's been shortened to a five month period from the face of the serpent. We don't have to. The shield just means what's a shield? Well, you say you got a salad there and you don't got a shield and a whole bunch of people walking by. That's not shielded from the sneeze. You put a shield up, you can sneeze, cough, choke, and puke the whole way through your lineup. It's not getting on that salad. It's a shield. We're going to see it. We see Satan's four hidden dynasties are not too hidden to us. And we look in amazement. It's astonishing. It's quite the show. Like, you may as well enjoy it. But what are you going to do? You are called specifically, like me and Tammy are called, through this companion chapel portal. We have a mission. We feel it. We love it. We want it. We are rich. Rich in Jesus Christ. Yeshua Messiah, our Savior. That is our shield. We are nourished. This word is meat. When you first get the word as it's written it's called milk that's like okay you know there's this guy here jesus christ you be born again and then there's the the natural order of things this guy's written um first you accept christ then you're born again that means you unload your donkey and all the things you're carrying like all the stuff from the past all your little pining ways and your little back talking and your little upsetness and your um jealousies and your angers like you're gonna have to let it go it's still it happened you don't let that you can't let the past dictate your future as it's written in our victory song we spot we spot the problems okay we're gonna come up against this problem again whether you're coming into another relationship another job another scenario some kind of things happening uh, how did I do it before? Uh, blew up on my face. Well, let's see. I was 50% part of that. So I'm going to approach it this way. And we got the gospel armor with us. And we're still going to get tried. God's going to see what you're made out of. you got the gospel armor on. Um, let's go ahead, Tammy. Let's go into verse 15 and, and uh, see what's going on. Revelation 12, 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So, listen, does it say that we're going to get on a spaceship like Mr. TV guy there on uh, channel so-and-so? What's that word when you put a drawing on? P dictate? Not dictate. Picture tate? Pictate? He pictated a spaceship, and all us getting on a spaceship, all us Christians, while the world goes crazy on itself, while Satan runs wild. Number one... That's not in the Bible. Number two, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Number three, it says 666 comes before Christ. We're still here on the planet. If we're still in the flesh, it's going to be a time of astonishment. Watching, it's going to be bittersweet. What is this? The woman opened her mouth. No, wait. And the earth helped the woman and opened her mouth and swallowed the flood of lies coming. Are He's, you doing 16 or are you teaching 15? 16. Opened her mouth and swallowed the flood of lies. I haven't read that one yet. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water, and that's a flood of lies. That's what comes out of his mouth. That's 15. That he might cause her to be carried away of this flood of lies. You have no chance unless you're wearing the gospel armor. Let's go, go ahead. Then uh, go to 16 and then... We can do a little wrap-up on 17. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So what we have here is a situation where God's saying, Whomsoever will, I will take care of you. 
but it just says we have a shield there, but we have to know how to engage that shield between us and Satan. We still see it, like John says, it's bittersweet. We, we all wonder after it and look, wow, this is amazing, but we don't fall for it. We're not deceived. God gives us a way out, and as it's written, let's use this verse. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God, your Father will never put more on you than you can handle. Your God, your Father will always make a way out for you. God's conditions, the word if is in the Bible a lot. If is a condition. You have to follow God's condition. You cannot make up your own. So, therefore, you, you can't love someone you don't know. God will protect his own. You have to love your father. That means you have to know your father. You can't make it up. Therefore, you have to have a working knowledge of the Bible. And you get protection here. God takes care of his own. Let's go to 17, Tammy. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So last three verses or four verses. Let's just let's just analyze this and make it more clear. Serpent casts out of his mouth. He doesn't barf up water. He a flood of lies comes out. He's using preachers and teachers. He's using the religious system as it's written in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 12 to 15. Don't be amazed. These people are disguised as ministers of righteousness don't even be amazed when satan is disguised as a minister of righteousness himself and you should read that for yourself the word is disguised uh can we translate disguise i, I didn't i'm not gonna go there right now but do you remember what the word was anyways second corinthians chapter 11 verse 11 to 15 and this is the flood of lies. Where does the flood of lies come from? It comes from all over the place, through his political system, his economic system, his religious system, and his educational system. And the earth helped the woman and opened up her mouth. This is an analogy of God taking care of his own. He gives us a spot, a place. He gives us something. And we have to wear the gospel armor. And as it's written, we can be right in the middle. Do you remember? Right in the middle of the heathenism. Do you remember what Lot did when he was in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah? Offering his daughters to these heathen, morally corrupt reprobates. And what happened? Christ. What God got him out. Jesus didn't come yet. Uh, salvation wasn't available yet at that time through Jesus Christ. But God has a way of protection. doesn't matter where you are. And this Cisco 17. Also, God always promises there's a remnant of truth wherever you are, even in Sodom and Gomorrah, as it's written in the Bible. Just a nasty, morally corrupt place. Spiritually corrupt. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's us. That's who Satan is after. That's who the false prophets are after. They're not coming down with, let's just finish the verse, which keep the commandments of God, that's us, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's a war of deception using malicious, gossipy, lies, character assassination, taking a few verses from the Bible and just putting a little slanderous truth on and go, come on, it's okay. This is the way it is now. It sounds good. It sounds great. It looks good. It fools many. Don't be deceived. Hey, Tammy, let's do a little wrap-up. Michael and I hope you enjoyed studying with us at Companion Chapel Worldwide Ministry. We are a nonprofit organization that promotes the teaching of the Bible to whomsoever will. If you would like to help spread the Word of God by making a donation to this ministry, you can visit our website, www.companionchapel.com and go to the Contact Us page or About Us page to offer your precious gift. Well, if we've helped you, I hope you can help us. And God bless and have a great day.